Okay, in this section of the class, we're going to talk about something very, very important in physics, and that is the concept of a scalar and a vector. We are going to talk about vectors and scalars all throughout physics in basically every chapter <coughs> in uh, your physics textbook. So what is a scalar? Um, in simplest terms, a scalar, it has magnitude, but no direction. What does that mean? It's just a number that uh, represents how big or small something is, but there's no direction involved to it. An example of a scalar would be the pressure in this room. This is atmospheric pressure. There's a certain you know force the air is exerting on my body, but it's kind of um, every place I go, it's really the same value, and it's, it's kind of um, equal, and it doesn't have a, a specific direction associated with it. So pressure would be one. Temperature is probably a, even a better an example. Um, if you take the temperature of a... Of a, of a can of Coke or something like that. At the top, the temperature is going to be a number. At the bottom, the temperature is going to be probably the same number. Everywhere you measure, you're going to get some temperature, 50 degrees. But there's no direction associated with it, so it's called a scalar. Okay, um, a vector is um, is a, a kind of like a scalar, except it has magnitude and direction. So um, <clears throat> there's lots of examples of vectors in real life. You, you use them and you're, you're, you're very comfortable with them you know, all the time. For instance, velocity is a vector quantity. Um, I can drive my car down the road that direction at 50 miles an hour. So I have a magnitude, which is the 50 miles an hour, and the direction is you know, east. Okay? If I travel north at 50 miles an hour, well, that's a different vector because although I'm still going the same speed, I'm going a different direction, and so it's magnitude and direction and that's what a vector is. There's tons of other uh, ve vectors in real life. Um, the electric field, um, you know, the magnetic field, when you have uh, two magnets and you start to plot the magnetic field lines, they have a, a magnitude, in other words, a strength, and they have a direction, so they're pointing in a certain direction. So how do we represent vectors <coughs> in physics? Um, we generally represent a vector as an arrow, okay? So this is some, some vector, Okay, and I'll put a little arrow over the top to des designate the fact that it's a vector. So what this represents is the, the length of the arrow is the magnitude, and then of course the direction is just whichever way it's pointing. So this vector is different than this vector. Even though they're pointed in the same direction, this one is a smaller magnitude than this one. Okay? So if this were the speed of a car, for instance, then this would be going faster than this one. And, uh, you know, this is a different vector than this because although it's roughly the same size it's traveling in a different direction so because you know if the magnitude is different or if the direction is different you know then the, the end result is the vector is describing something different and that's why these things are really useful because we actually use these things in real life so <clears throat> we need to talk about the concept of how do you add and subtract vectors and I think you'll understand why that's useful here in a second here I have a box it's just some box sitting on a floor or just kind of suspended in space here, okay? And I'm going to act on this box with two vectors, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Here's one vector, okay? Um, I'm going to say the vector A is 10 newtons. Now, we haven't talked about newtons at all up to this point. I'm introducing things as we go along here. A newton in physics is the uh, equivalent of a pound. It's, it's kind of in terms of the big concept here. It's a unit of force, okay? So in English units,